For more than 30 years, modern mathematics was stuck. Not because it lacked ideas, not because it lacked brilliance, but because of a single sentence no one could prove. Mathematicians built entire theories around it. They wrote papers, they announced theorems, and then quietly, they added the same footnote every time, assuming the fundamental lemma. Then, someone changed the rules. This is the story of how Engo Bo Chow unlocked a problem that stopped a field, not by pushing harder, but by seeing differently. Engo Bo Chow was born on June 28, 1972, in Hanoi, at a moment when Vietnam was still recovering from decades of war. The country was poor in resources, but rich in resolve, shaped by scarcity and a collective belief that education was one of the few paths forward. This was not an era of comfort or abundance. It was an era where progress depended on discipline and where intellectual effort carried weight far beyond the classroom. Inside his home, science was not a distant aspiration. It was daily life. His father, Engo Hui Kan, was a physicist working as a researcher at the Institute of Mechanics. His mother, Nguyen Thi Huai, was a mathematician and university lecturer. Conversations were shaped by ideas, not by ambition. Books mattered. Questions were welcomed. There was no deliberate attempt to manufacture genius. Learning was simply normal an extension of curiosity rather than a performance to be rewarded. Outside the home, Hanoi reflected the contradictions of the time. Material shortages were common, but intellectual rigor was not. Vietnam placed a remarkable emphasis on mathematics, viewing it as both a cultural strength and a strategic necessity. The country built systems to identify talent early, channeling gifted students into specialized programs designed to cultivate depth, endurance, and precision. Engo Bo Chow entered this system almost naturally. From his earliest years in school, teachers noticed something unusual. He was not just quick to find answers. He was patient with complexity. He lingered on problems longer than required, not satisfied until he understood why a solution worked. This inclination set him apart. It was not about winning, it was about structure. That mindset carried him into Vietnam's elite educational track and eventually to Hanoi Amsterdam High School for the Gifted, one of the most demanding academic institutions in the country. At Hanoi Amsterdam High School, mathematics was not treated as a subject but as a craft. Students were trained to endure difficulty, to wrestle with abstraction and to accept that failure was part of understanding. Problems often took hours, sometimes days. There was no guarantee of success, only the expectation of effort. This environment rewarded discipline over privilege, persistence over talent alone. As Engo Bo Chow advanced, the stakes became unmistakable. National competitions were not merely academic events, they were gateways. Success meant access to further training, mentorship and opportunities beyond Vietnam's borders. Training camps pushed students to their limits. The pressure was constant. The margin for error was thin. Mathematics, for many, had become a test of survival. Then came the International Mathematical Olympiad. In 1988, Ngo Bo Chow represented Vietnam and earned a gold medal with a perfect score. The following year, in 1989, he returned and did it again. Two consecutive gold medals, two performances without a single mistake. On the global stage, this was extraordinary. Among mathematicians, it was unforgettable. The world noticed, Vietnam noticed. Here was proof that brilliance could emerge from scarcity, that discipline could rival any advantage of privilege or geography. Ngo Bo Chow had reached the absolute peak of mathematical competition. But this was not an ending. It was a threshold. Because solving problems in a matter of hours is one thing. Solving problems that resist the world's best minds for decades 
is something else entirely. And that journey was only just beginning. When Engo Bo Chow left Vietnam, he was already known as one of the most extraordinary young mathematicians his country had ever produced. But reputation is local. Mathematics is not. France was not simply another country. It was another intellectual climate altogether. The familiar structure of competitions, rankings and clear outcomes disappeared almost immediately. In its place stood an academic culture that valued depth over speed, hesitation over certainty, and questions over answers. For the first time, his past achievements carried no guarantees. They were not dismissed, but they were no longer sufficient. Admission to the École Normale Supérieure in Paris marked his entry into one of the most demanding mathematical environments in the world. ENS was not designed to produce fast problem solvers. It was designed to produce thinkers, here, mathematics unfolded as a vast, interconnected structure. Definitions were layered on top of definitions. Theorems depended on entire fields of prior knowledge. Understanding required time, often more time than a student expected to give. This was a shock. Not intellectual failure, but intellectual disorientation. At ENS, the habits that had once ensured success began to fail. Olympiad mathematics rewards clarity under pressure. Research mathematics offers neither. Problems were no longer bounded by time or format. Some resisted every known method. Others dissolved into ambiguity, revealing that even the right question was unclear. Engo Bo Chow learned, sometimes painfully, that speed could be a liability, that intuition could mislead, that elegance often emerged only after prolonged struggle. This was the moment where many prodigies quietly vanish, when certainty gives way to doubt. Slowly, a new discipline took shape. He learned that real mathematical problems may take years to approach and may never be resolved. That partial understanding is often the only progress available. That abstraction is not an obstacle, but a necessity. Instead of chasing solutions, he began to study structures. Instead of mastering tricks, he began to search for principles. This shift from execution to exploration marked the true beginning of his life as a research mathematician. That transformation deepened during his doctoral studies at Université Paris-Sud under the supervision of Gérard Lomont. Lomont introduced him to a way of thinking in which geometry became a language capable of expressing ideas far beyond shapes and space. Geometry could encode symmetry, arithmetic, and deep algebraic relationships. Through this lens, Engo Bo Chow entered the orbit of the Langlands program, a vast, unfinished framework attempting to unify major areas of mathematics. It was not a problem to be solved, it was a universe to be explored. During his PhD and early research years, Engo Bo Chow began publishing work that signaled a shift in identity. These papers were not final answers, but they revealed a growing command of abstraction and a willingness to engage with difficult foundational ideas. Senior mathematicians noticed the change, not because of speed or brilliance, but because of direction. He was no longer defined by how quickly he could solve a problem. He was defined by how deeply he was willing to stay with one. In the 1970s, as modern mathematics expanded into new territory, a deceptively small statement appeared at the heart of a vast theory. It was called the Fundamental Lemma. The name was misleading. This was not a technical aside or a stepping stone. It was a gate. And for more than 30 years, that gate stayed closed. Entire research programs advanced only on the assumption that the lemma was true. Papers were written. Theorems were announced, but again and again, the same warning appeared. Assuming the fundamental lemma, progress was conditional. Mathematics was waiting. The fundamental lemma sat at the intersection of several of the deepest ideas in modern mathematics. It was essential to the comparison of trace formulas, a powerful method for understanding symmetry in arithmetic objects. 
It was central to endoscopy, a subtle process that relates different algebraic groups to one another. And it was indispensable to the Langlands program, an ambitious vision aiming to unify number theory, geometry, and representation theory. Without the lemma, these connections could not be fully realized. It was not just one problem among many, it was a bottleneck. For decades, the world's best mathematicians tried to break through. They attacked it analytically, they attacked it algebraically, nothing worked in general. By the early 2000s, the fundamental lemma had become legendary, not because of what it said, but because of what it refused to give. Engo Bo Chao did not try to overpower the lemma. Instead, he asked a quieter question. What if this isn't an analytic problem at all? Rather than attacking the equation directly, he began to reinterpret the problem geometrically. He translated abstract algebraic identities into questions about shapes, spaces, and structures. At the center of this transformation was the Hitchin vibration a sophisticated geometric construction that allowed him to reorganize the problem entirely. This was not a shortcut, it was a change of language. The work that followed was slow, technical and largely solitary. Years passed. The proof grew longer, deeper and more intricate than anything attempted before. It required new tools, new estimates and new ideas, many of which had to be invented along the way. Even understanding the argument demanded expertise across multiple mathematical disciplines. This was not a result you could stumble upon. It had to be built. In 2008, Engo Bo Chao announced that he had proven the fundamental lemma. The reaction was cautious. The proof was too long, too deep, too unprecedented to be accepted immediately. Experts began the slow process of verification, reading hundreds of pages line by line. Two years later, in 2010, the proof was published and accepted. The verdict was clear. The fundamental lemma was no longer an assumption. It was a theorem. The fundamental lemma had never been missing. Mathematics simply needed a new way to see it. And by changing the rules of the game, Engo Bo Chao had changed the future of the field itself. In 2010, at the International Congress of Mathematicians in Hyderabad, India, Engo Bo Chao stood on a stage reserved for those who have permanently altered mathematics. He was awarded the Fields Medal. The citation was precise and restrained, as mathematics prefers, for his proof of the fundamental lemma using new algebra-geometric methods. But the meaning was unmistakable. A problem that had blocked progress for more than 30 years was finally resolved. After the proof, his career entered a different phase. He joined the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton, one of the most prestigious research institutions in the world. IAS does not ask its scholars to teach classes or chase metrics. It asks only one thing, think. Here, Engo Bo Chao continued working at the frontier of mathematics, collaborating with leading researchers, mentoring postdoctoral scholars and shaping directions in areas influenced by the Langlands program. His presence carried weight. When he spoke, people listened, not because of the medal, but because of the depth behind it. In 2011, Ngo Bo Chao became the founding scientific director of the Vietnam Institute for Advanced Study in Mathematics, known as VASM. This was not about replicating Western institutions, it was about creating something sustainable, an environment where deep, curiosity-driven research could exist inside Vietnam. VASM focused on people, not rankings, on long-term programs, not quick results. It invited international mathematicians, supported young researchers, and connected Vietnam to the global mathematical community in a lasting way. This was institution building, not self-promotion. Beyond mathematics itself, Engo Bo Chao became a careful but influential voice in conversations about science and education. He spoke publicly about the importance of fundamental research, academic freedom, and evaluation based on quality rather than bureaucracy. 
He advised institutions and policymakers, drawing on his experience across Vietnam, France, and the United States. His advocacy was never loud, but it was consistent, and it carried credibility grounded in achievement. Ngo Bo Chow's legacy cannot be reduced to a single proof, or a single medal, or a single institution. It lies in something quieter and more enduring, a demonstration that patience can outperform brilliance. That changing perspective can matter more than force, and that responsibility, after success, can mean building paths for others to walk. He did not just solve a problem, he changed how mathematics moves forward,